London was a series of villages centuries ago and all these villages they had something called common land and the common land was the land that was so poor that nobody wanted to grow anything on it and nobody wanted to graze animals on it and it was usually poor because it was very wet. As the centuries went by and London spread it swallowed up all these villages and some of the commons were not so poor and they got used for building on but this one here at Wimbledon Common was always very wet particularly up the top and it managed to survive into the 1800s and then Victorian London had spread out and it was going to get built on somewhere or another anyway a group of people one who happened to be an MP others who had plenty of money they moved out of here from London as London spread and they wanted to keep this as green space they worked together they did fundraising and they got an act of parliament passed because these were people with money and with influence and the playing fields named after one of one of them Richardson Evans um, anyway they got the act of parliament passed and this became common so this isn't even common as like the others this is common with a specific law all its own laws but the people who got this law passed were philanthropists it's a word that's gone out of fashion they wanted to keep this green and not get it built on but the laws they passed in Parliament said it was open to everyone and there were all these laws you couldn't do. You couldn't pick things off here, you couldn't remove anything off the common, you couldn't do all sorts of things. Right, now I've been walking this common for 55 years and it was fantastic. It's a green lung. You could walk on here, you didn't have to walk on concrete. You're actually used, used to go through these bushes when they were here and you'd have birds popping across in front of your face. Anyway, in the last five years, the previous management of the common has changed and we've got a group now in charge. If I call them townies, please don't take offence everyone who works, work, work, lives in a town because I'm actually a townie. But what I mean is they've actually got no idea. They've come up here and it's, what can we do with it? And they're doing things like you saw behind. All the holly that's the under shrubs in all the trees, which is where all the little birds live in these woods. It's where all the insects go and hide over winter because they've got refuge in the holly bushes and they can survive the winter. And they're taking the lot away. Um, they've been cutting trees and selling them to make money, both in the woods and on the top. They've got a system of clearance up on the tomum, common, top of the common, because the top of the common is actually called Putney Heath, or part of it is. And they have this idea that heath means heather grows. Well, if anyone looks in the Oxford English Dictionary, they will find that heath means wasteland, scrubland, moor. And the top of the common is all three of them in one go because it is so wet. Anyway, they want to turn it into heath for heather and they say the trees shouldn't be there and they're cutting rid of the trees. And anyone who has walked up there this winter knows it's not just been wet. It's been wet. And it takes ages to grain, but then that's why it stayed here for a while. Well, what's really peeing me off is various laws that were put in that mean I have the right to walk anywhere on foot. There they are, they've tied off a bit, telling me I can't go through because they've got to do some work. And why are they doing the work? Because people like the Forestry Commission and Nature England or whatever, whoever it is, say they should do that. And that's outsiders coming in who've got no idea of what is here, no idea of what animals there are. I could go on and I could tell you, for instance, all the bluebells that have been trampled in these woods because it's all been churned up. And they won't grow again for 50 years because they're growing places where there's no disturbance. I can tell you where there's forget-me-nots. There was a whole stand of forget-me-nots. Two metres wide, six metres long, came up every year. They decided to clear an area and this time they pulped, put the wood through the shredder. And where did they put all the shreddings? On top of the forget-me-nots so the forget-me-nots didn't come up. So, didn't mean to offend anyone by calling them townies, but what I meant was they came from outside, they've come in here, they don't know what's here, they don't walk the common, and I, 
in the end, I think, what do they like? They don't like the trees in the woods. They don't like the trees in the open. They're kind of, they don't like the holly. And if you go up on the top, they don't like the gorse. The gorse fulfills the same function on the top as the holly does down here. Nice and prickly, insect hideaway for the whole of the winter. So you've got the insects, you've got the birds. And anyone can see, if you look here, where you can find a bird. There's nowhere for a bird to go. There's nothing to hide insects for the bird to find food. So I haven't got it. And my one last gripe is the amount of grass that's getting cut. There were lots of places here, particularly up the top, particularly getting down towards Putney, um, that qualified as grassland, pasture, meadowland, grazing and wildflower meadows. And I think every single one of them now, they are mowing. And of course, as soon as you mow them, you lose all the wild flowers. When you lose all the wild flowers, you lose all the insects again because every single insect, its young feed on something different. People who are into moths and butterflies will know that, but even all the other things do it. And we used to have areas here where there were swifts, swallows, martins, and skylarks. And they're not around anymore because there's no food. There's no food because they are cutting the grass. And this last year, we even didn't have any Canada geese because Canada geese actually graze grass and all the grass near any of the pot, ponds and I mean grass that you would say grass field you walk across not the great tussocky stuff and when you look there are wildflowers in there if you actually bother to look and they're all mown now so the Canada geese have nowhere to feed their young because you see them during the day sitting on the pond and at night they're gone to the nearest patch of grass and they're feeding and if you cut the grass, there's nothing for them to feed on. So, you know, a lot of people consider Canada geese pests because they're so common. But if you can get rid of the Canada geese, God, what are you actually doing? I, I, it pisses me off. It pisses me off to the back thing. So, and I think I've, uh, I could go on an awful lot more actually, but I think that's uh, enough for the time being, yeah. <laughs>